So welcome to the pre-scene analysis for your strategic case study exam. Now the strategic case study exam puts you in the position of a senior finance manager. So before we begin our pre-scene analysis, uh, we would just like to know that if you, just like you to know that if you go to our website, you'll be able to find free webinars, free resources that you can use for your study progression. So moving on to our pre-scene analysis for February 2020, the company that's been given to us is called ShinePod. Now ShinePod is in this position, in this company, you have been given the role of a senior finance manager. So let's look at our pre-scene analysis. Throughout this analysis, what we'll try and do is we'll highlight the important points We'll highlight the important scenarios. We'll highlight the important words so that when you're writing an actual exam answer, you have good material to include. We'll also look at your study syllabus of E3, P3 and F3 and how that's being included in your analysis because obviously 25% of your marks are based on technical skills. So how these technical skills can be incorporated into your answer that's what we'll be looking at as well, along with giving you good ideas, good explanations, good illustrations on understanding the pre-scene. So ShinePod is the company that you've been given. It's a hypothetical company. You are a senior man manager in the finance function at ShinePod. It's also called SD. You report directly to the board of directors. Now, as a senior manager, you need to know that you are going to look at the long term. You are going to look at future issues. You're going to look at strategic issues. So whenever you're writing something in the exam, you got to make sure that you're looking at the longer term. Your decision is going to affect the organization because you report directly to the board. Your audience will be the board of directors. And to give a satisfactory answer, understanding the full scale of the business operation, is very, very important. Now you can only make strategic situations or you can only give strategic solutions if you have very good knowledge of the industry and of the pre-scene analysis. And that's what we try to do throughout our whole document. Now ST is based in Midland, which is again a fictional country where the currency is M dollars. Midland requires companies to prepare their financial statements in accordance with IFRS. This is where your F3 study comes into question. Mainly, we'll then start talking about exchange rate risks once we move to the latter part of the pre-scene. Now, as these quoted on the stock exchange, they tell you that it's a quoted company, which means it's listed on the stock exchange. The advantages remain the same. It gives you access, good capital growth, enhanced visibility, liquidity, transparency, and efficiency. Whereas the disadvantages will be, as it says over here, it's well-regulated, corporate regulations, government scrutiny, loss of control, increased liability, enhanced reporting requirements. So these are the points which will affect SD because it's a quoted company. Now, companies that are quoted on the stock exchange need to adhere to the corporate co governance code. Now, over here, they say the Midland corporate governance code, but you can assume that it's going to have a strong correlation with the UK corporate governance code. So your E3 studies and your P3 studies for your corporate governance code are very important over here. You need to know what the code means, what each part of the code means, and you should be able to justify when we further go on to the structure of this organization, we'll see if the corporate governance code has been adhered to. Now we start talking about coffee. Now coffee is one of the most popular drinks in the world, obviously. It is made from beans that develop inside the berries of a family of shrubs and trees that are native to parts of South Africa and Asia. So they're native to these parts. Although these plants are now cultivated in many parts of the world because of your technology advancements. When the berries are ripe, they are picked and processed. The dried coffee beans are roasted. 
after which they are used to make coffee by brewing them in very hot water. So they're explaining you briefly the process. This process is greatly explained in detail in the later stages of the pre-scene. Coffee is a popular drink. It has a bitter taste, but it can be sweetened with milk and sugar. There are many different varieties of coffee and different varieties can be blended to create even wider range of flavors. Now we'll discuss more about this. It's already been discussed in the industry analysis that we make. Coffee contains caffeine, which is a stimulant. It has a refreshing quality. It's slightly acidic, which means it aids digestion as well. This can be seen as an area of promotion for us in today's, organ in today's world where everybody is so health conscious. This can be seen as an area of advertisement for you. It can be seen as a promotion strategy for you. So building our promotions around the health benefits of coffee can come in good in a market. Now it also gives the name to the mid morning and mid afternoon coffee breaks. Coffee is a major commodity. It is one of the top agricultural exports. It is quoted in USA on most of the international markets and hence creates a potential for transaction risk as our domestic currency is M dollars again. A lot of USA, uh, a lot of companies are quoted on the USA stock markets, which means that the price is generally in USD, as mentioned over here, which gives rise again to a foreign currency risk because your currency is M dollars. So if you're trading with the USD, obviously fluctuations are going to affect you. It is one of the most valuable commodities exported by developing countries. Coffee exports have the potential to keep a significant proportion of the populations of some developing countries out of poverty because that's their only source of income. That's their only, uh, let's say, major commodity with they can export and earn money from. So it is one of the most valuable commodities and it helps keep your developing countries out of poverty because it's their main source of income. If you look at the top coffee producers in the world you'll see that brazil and colombia in your south america and indonesia and vietnam on the asia side of the continent of the world will tell you that it's very it's it, it is made in many parts of the world but this is where their concentration is brazil colombia and indonesia and vietnam now when you look at such a global commodity we need to consider many, many different market forces. The first one being, there are a lot of different sellers in the market. So buyers will have considerable strength. There are many, many sellers. There are, as you can see, the major ones are only a few, but there are many sellers in different parts of the world. So they will have, so the buyers, the people who are buying will have considerable strengths. Political risks in today's time is very important because of many trade barriers and uncertainties around the world. Take the very simple example of the US and China. It's not relating to coffee, but you can see that many industries are suffering because of these barriers. If you talk about coffee, then we'll have to talk about Brazil, which is one of the most, which is one of the growing economies, but still high uncertainty because of their new precedent. So, Especially one of the biggest producers, Brazil, known to hamper free trade by regulations, tariffs, quotas, which are affecting the price of coffee. Now you'll see that throughout this, we are giving you ideas, points, which are not in the pre-scene. We are analyzing it. The whole reason for us to do this is so that when you write your answer, when you're looking at a question, when you're looking at a scenario, you have good material to include. Now, for example, if you're writing something on the external market, on the external risks in an environment, you can start by saying that in today's world, political risks are something that we need to keep an eye out for. For example, Brazil and its uh, tariffs and quotas which are affecting coffee. So what you're doing is just giving the examiner insight into your knowledge of the industry. He'll definitely notice this. He'll definitely warrant it and you will get your marks for that. And political risks is also part of your P3 studies. So you are also including technical knowledge. 
So everything that we are doing over here, everything that we are discussing over here, is only being done for the reason that you can include it in your answer. You can have good material to include in your answer. Now, coffee shrubs are grown in tropical countries. So climate change and global warming has been an increasing issue in today's modern world. And hence, if an untimely rain or an untimely heat wave were to affect these countries and wipe out a crop harvest, it could be significant for the price of coffee overall. Now, let's say there is a big purchase happening in the US from India regularly of coffee. Let's say, for example, if something were to happen in a climatic scenario in India, the coffee production is wiped out. What happens to US? It will have to pay more. It will have to pay higher. It will have to pay the customers, obviously, in the end, will experience a rise in prices for coffee, for the coffee that they get at home. So it's made in tropical countries. Hence, again, environmental risks come into being. They require special growing conditions and they need to be prevented from excessive sunshine. So it's a, it's a crop that can be affected by your environmental changes global warming which is again today's biggest problem it takes four to five years from planting the seed to getting your coffee berries so as you can see it's an extensive process hence the risk increases because if would you be happy if you get your return in one year or if you get it in five years obviously the quicker you get your return the lower the risk over here you gotta wait five years you put in all your money you put in all your harvest and you get your money, you get a return after five years. So it's a risky process. It's a risky uh, business to be in. It is important to plant seeds annually to obviously ensure that the continuous cycle of coffee remains. The coffee plants will produce berries for approximately 25 years. So as you can see, after the five-year gestation period, for 25 years, you're good. Coffee has a significant environmental footprint. Coffee plantations require a great deal of water to enable the shrubs to thrive and create a good crop of berries. As you can see over here, now one of the most important reporting factors, which is sustainability. Part of your E3 and F3 syllabus where we look at different types of sustainability reporting and government actions for the same being included in your strategic options category. So you're looking at two things, sustainability and your strategic options. Because it's leaving an environmental footprint because of the huge amount of water that it consumes. Growers often use chemicals as protection. Coffee growers have been accused of clearing land and destroying natural habitats. This is particularly true when the wet process is used, where you have to give coffee beans a lot of water. Doing so improves the flavor but it requires the use of special equipment and large amounts of water. Again, sustainability over here is questioned. Your impact, your environmental footprint comes into being. There have also been concerns about the exploitation of plantation workers, one of the biggest problems of coffee trade in the modern world as well. In the real world as well is the exploitation of plantation workers in developing countries, especially in uh, Africa, in other parts of India as well, who may be forced to work long hours for poor pay. Again, if you look at market conditions, the farmers in these cases have little or even no power because of the level of the control of the big players. Now, for example, let's say a big company XYZ goes to a, a big farmer or a big farm institution in Africa, and they're going to trade with them for about tens of hundreds of uh, kilos of coffee, coffee beans. Now, obviously, the farmer is going to not have power in this position because it's such a big company, it's given them such a big order. So they will be able to control all the factors. So exploitation has become a major problem. As a company, SD, when we go forward, we need to look at how we are affecting this market, how we are helping this market, supporting this market. Because something like that definitely hampers your reputation. So corporate reputation risk is at being P3 studies again. There are also concerns that the owners of small plantations are exposed to fluctuations in world coffee prices. 
that can result in them being unable to support their families. If the price of coffee goes up, good. But if it goes down, it can definitely hamper their uh, income and how they support their family. So risk exposure to commodity price risk becomes involved over here. So again, a risk that we're talking about is commodity price. If the price of the main commodity, which is coffee, goes up and down, they're going to be affected. If there were to be a bad produce or in any situation where the yield is not in sync with the demand, it will affect the entire market, including your farmers, middlemen, and eventually ST and the consumer as well. So commodity price risk is important because the beans itself, you get them at a higher price. The overall produce, the overall product, is going to be highly high priced. There have been a number of initiatives to address these issues. For example, there are organic coffee plantations which use pest free uh, chemicals or, uh, to avoid any chemicals that are being used. There are also very important is fair trade initiatives which involve paying the farmers a fair price that is sufficient to enable to support their families. So no matter what the price is in the market, you will pay them a fair price, fair trade. Over here, again, we talk about reputation risk because a major area of concern, if we are found to be engaging in exploitative practices while we source our raw material. Now, there are some inherent problems with fair trade, which we'll see in the modern world, which we picked out from the industry. You'll see that the problems with fair trade is that overall, you should encourage less coffee production, not more, because it's clearing landfills, using water, and all of that. So if you're paying them a fair price, people will want to start cultivating more coffee, harm the environment. Then there are benefits of the fair trade system. It lacks transparency. You are paying them a fair price, but are you paying it to an organization? Is it, going, is it being passed on to the farmer? Nobody knows. Relatively little fair trade coffee originates from the poorest countries. Not very poor companies are get countries, sorry, are getting the benefits of this fair trade initiative. Fair trade is not helping the poorest growers. So as you can see, even if a fair trade price is paid, it's not very it's a not very open market. It's not very beneficial to the final coffee grower or the actual farmer. Now, coffee as a beverage. There are many different kinds of coffees which can be pur uh, purchased or experienced. The first one is your most traditional coffee beans and ground coffee. Now, the ground coffee is made into a drink using a variety of methods, all of which involve mixing the ground coffee with very high water or very hot water, ideally just below boiling. Many coffee drinkers enjoy the aroma, but it's time consuming and leaves the consumer with the need to dispose of the used coffee grounds. In today's time, the major reason why coffee pods, which is our main market, have come into being is because of the convenience. Nobody has the time. The customers over here, we can call them coffee lovers. They would have in-depth product knowledge. They would know that, okay, this product has this much caffeine, this much sugar, whatever and probably no specifics that others wouldn't. This is a niche segment, this is a small segment. It's very traditional because it's time consuming and it leaves you to dispose of with the coffee grounds. Second one we talk about is instant coffee. Now instant coffee is manufactured by brewing coffee in industrial quantities, filtering out the used grounds and drying the resulting drink to leave a soluble powder or granulated product. The consumer only has to spoon it into a cup or a mug, adds it to hot water, your coffee is ready. Instant coffee is obviously more convenient, but the flavor is not the same. Some consumers believe that instant coffee is inferior to the coffee made from the coffee beans. So people who are consuming instant coffee won't really care. They just want coffee. They don't want it to be, uh, let's say something specific. They don't care with how much caffeine or how much uh, they don't care about the intricacies the customers are people who like coffee but don't really care about the specifics they do not know much about other offerings as well it's cheap it's convenient 
Let's me, let me have it. That's what their thought process is. It's what most people use in their normal life. Third is coffee shop coffee. Most towns and cities have large number of coffee shops. It's a very upcoming market in many developing countries, obviously. These fulfill a number of functions. You can, there will be a public space. You can meet your friends, socialize, have a chat. Coffee shops have trained baristas who can use the steam powered machines to create the coffees that you cannot do at home. One popular variation is the espresso, which involves filling a metal container with ground coffee, blowing steam. You always can do it if you are only trained. These drinks are very popular, but are expensive and the equipment needed to make them properly is too large for one to buy at home. So it's one of the most developing markets because of the culture barriers being reduced around the world. For example, Starbucks was big in the US, but it only came into India about five, seven years ago. When it did, it became one of the fastest growing companies, one of the fastest growing coffee shop models because, and this could only happen because of your social media barriers, social media, uh, internet, people were exposed to this kind of stuff. And hence, they are happy to indulge in this culture. It is more complex, obviously, and requires specialist skills and equipment as mentioned. You can't experience this at home. So coffee shops are coming up. Then there are coffee pods. This is our major market. So coffee pods make it possible to create coffee in the home that is almost as good as the coffee shop. If you want an alternative, if you want a substitute, Coffee pods are your option. Now, close alternative to customers who like the coffee served in coffee shops when they don't want to leave their house or they're not ready to pay high cost. Consumers buy an electric coffee machine that is compatible with their preferred brand of coffee pod. These machines are small enough to fit in your kitchen. You'll see them all around Western Europe, even the Western countries such as USA and stuff like that, which have a strong coffee culture. Consumers also require a supply of coffee pods, which means you'll need to have the machine as well as the separate coffee pod, which you can buy from anywhere in today's market. The pods are made out of plastic and aluminum. Major problem for these companies who are, talk, who are making coffee pods is the sustainability. They're being questioned on it again and again because they're, they have to be made with plastic and aluminum, which both harm the environment. So the machine automatically heats the water, punches the pod, blows the steam, you get your coffee ready. Some coffee machines can create froths from milk to enable the customer to make a cappuccino as well. So you can do everything that you earlier experienced at a coffee shop. Some consumers find it more convenient to use coffee pods rather than ground beans. They're a little bit more expensive, obviously because of the coffee pods and the machine expense but they're easy to dispose of. You don't have to care about anything and it can be less messy as well. So if you look at this, this was the first part of the pre-scene. There's a lot more of the pre-scene left, which we are going to analyze over the next two hours or so, which is every part, every word of the pre-scene, which is important, which can guide you to a specific situation, which can help you to look at, uh, to have good material to include in your answer will be discussed. We'll be talking about the financials in details as well. The whole ratio analysis, financial analysis is done by us. We'll talk about that in detail as well. But this is the first part of your pre-seed.